Hey, what's going on guys? How is everybody doing? So on its surface, Genshin Impact seems like a pretty simple game, right? You have your characters, they have their elements, you do some reactions, they make more damage. End of story, that's how it goes. Seems easy enough. But what if I told you that there is a hidden mechanic that you can use to actually do more damage with your reactions and some side things like taking down those Fatui shields even easier. Elemental gauges is a concept that theory crafters have been doing math on, creating graphs for, and while it's all well and good, I find that sometimes looking at all the numbers and the graphs can cause you more of a headache than it's actually worth and make it a lot more complicated than it actually is. So today we're going to be diving into the realistic applications of elemental gauges, how they work, and how you can use them to actually deal more damage with your team comps. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So to start off, let's get a baseline, a control group, if you will, to see what Ganyu's numbers are without any reaction. In the clip on the left, you'll see both Ganyu's charge shot and bloom damage without either a critical hit or a reaction. And on the right, you'll see the damage with a critical hit on both, but still no reaction. So we're looking at 3,012 damage on the charge shot and 5,831 damage on the bloom with no crit. Important to note here, if you're double checking my math, my Ganyu is C1, so her bloom will always hit the enemy with a 15% cryo resist reduction. We also have a 10,210 charged attack, and we can see here 17,358 and 19,768 bloom with crits. So that 19k hit is actually because of Ganyu C1, the 17k hit is her base crit damage. My Ganyu has 239% crit damage, so when we do all this math, this all checks out. Now that we have our baseline numbers, let's take a look at Ganyu's damage when paired with Jin Yen. So we see here first that the first hit does proc melt, giving us a non-critical hit of 5,020. When we calculate that, we multiply 3,012 by the reaction factor 50% or 1.5. And finally, we have to remember to add the elemental mastery bonus, which for my Ganyu is 58 or 11% to her melt reaction, which leaves us with 5,015, which is close enough by a margin of error. So our first hit was in fact a melt, and our second hit, which we can see here, is the same crit we were getting before, so that crit is not a melt. Let's do the exact same thing, but this time we'll be using Bennett as our pyro applicator. Just changing heroes shouldn't change anything though, we should expect the same results, right? Well, let's take a look and see if that's the case. Now wait just a minute, why is our bloom dealing even more damage than last time? It's almost like I planned that. So now what we're actually seeing here is both the charge shot and the bloom are now triggering a melt reaction. And this is the result of elemental gauges and why they are so important. The theory of gauges goes like this. Every skill and burst in the game applies an element of some kind, we know this already, but each skill and burst also has a different strength at which the element is applied. Now, what's important to differentiate here is that when we talk about strong or weak elemental application in this explanation, we are not talking about how strong the damage is, only the application of the element. There are three different levels of applications, and these can be visualized by a block or a gauge, as it's called. There is one gauge application, two gauge application, and four gauge application. How strong the gauge is will effectively determine how long it will take before the elemental debuff decays off the enemy. For a single gauge application, it will take nine and a half seconds before the gauge disappears. On a two gauge application, each gauge will disappear after six seconds, and lastly, a four gauge application will disappear at a rate of 4.2 seconds a gauge. So the more gauges we have, the faster they decay, but the duration goes up progressively from 9.5 seconds to 12 seconds, and finally 16.8 seconds. And of note that these are more average times than exact, there's actually a short instance of time at the beginning of the elemental application that decays much faster than the rest and then slows down over time. But on average, these are the times we can observe. So we now know what determines how long an element sticks around, but how does this relate to getting double melt triggers with Bennett? Well, while the aura element, that is the initial element that's applied, has a gauge, so does the triggering element. If, when we subtract the triggering element's gauge from the aura element, we get a difference of zero or less, both elements are removed and the enemy is left at a neutral state. However, if the difference is greater than zero, the initial element will remain on the enemy. This is what is happening in the Ganyu Bennett case. 
Bennett's skill applies a pyro element with a gauge of two. However, Ganyu's charge shot and bloom only apply one gauge of cryo. So after the first shot, since the difference is still greater than zero, pyro remains and then reacts with the bloom. There is another wrench to throw into this, of course, and that is with amplifying reactions, those being your melt and vaporize. So there is a multiplicative modifier to your gauges. If the reaction is a weak reaction, so for melt, you would have cryo applying to pyro, or for vaporize, you would have pyro applying to hydro, your gauge application is actually going to be halved. So what we were actually seeing there with the Ganyu-Bennett reaction is that Ganyu was actually only removing half a gauge with her charge attack and bloom shot instead of the full one. And what this this means is that if we could fire Ganyu's shots fast enough to outpace the rate of decay on Bennett's pyro application, we could potentially get four melt triggers just off one reaction. The opposite is true too, however. So if we're doing strong reactions, so hydro to pyro or pyro to cryo, it's going to double your gauge removal. So if we switched roles and had Bennett skill applied to Ganyu's cryo application, instead of removing two gauges, we're actually removing four. However, even if that difference is less than zero, the reaction is still gonna occur. We see this all the time. Reactions involving electro, all your transformative reactions, these all occur as normal with no multiplicative natures. Now, what about a Nemo and Geo with their swirl and crystallize? Well, all of these gauges are actually cut in half regardless. So that's why a lot of the time when you see like Albedo doing crystallize with all your heroes, the element actually still remains. So I posed the idea before that if you could attack with Ganyu faster than the decay rate of Bennett's skill, you could potentially get four melt triggers. Well, now let's look at a more advanced technique that will allow us to cheese the timers and extend gauge duration so that we can potentially get more reactions out of our heroes. Looking at this chart, that is a resource from the Kaching Main's Discord server, I'll leave a link to this below, we can see that Bennett in fact does have a two gauge application as we've been talking about, but Jin Yen only applies one gauge from her skill. Now, if you remember back to when we were talking about decay times, a single gauge application will decay after 9.5 seconds, while a two gauge element will decay after 12 seconds, but each gauge will decay after six seconds. If we first apply Jin Yen's skill, which will load the enemy up with a single gauge of pyro, then we use Bennett's skill, which will still apply two gauges of pyro. We don't get three gauges, we'll still only go up to two. However, the gauge will use the decay rate of the first application and apply it to the second instance. So now we've set up a scenario where we have two gauges of pyro, but with the decay rate of 9.5 seconds per gauge. The gauge's decay rate is always determined using the first gauge applied if you apply two elements of the same type. So now, with this extended two gauge duration, we effectively have both more time to trigger our reactions, and with weaker reactions, can actually double up on our triggers. And as a final note, the strength of an elemental attack will affect how much shield is removed from a Fatui shield. So that pretty much wraps it up for this one and Elemental Gauges. Hopefully you guys found this guide useful and it will help you guys, maybe even in team building, but in terms of getting more damage from your heroes. If you want to see more content from me, you can head over to my Twitch page, twitch.tv slash xjazze, or you can subscribe right here on YouTube by clicking that red subscribe button, like the video if you liked it, and hit that notification bell. That way you never miss a video. And of course, if you want to join our community over at Discord, link will be down in the description below. But guys, that's all I got for today. Hopefully you did enjoy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.